Look at these two JavaScript functions. Which of these do you find easier to read? They both do basically the same thing, but the one on top uses a for loop and the one underneath is a generator function that uses yield. All right, hold that thought. What about these two functions, top or bottom? Take your pick. I'll give you a moment just to read through these and decide. Do you find the top one easier to read or do you find the bottom one easier to read? Now there's no definitive right answer to which of these functions is more readable. The answer comes down to one word, vocabulary. Let me explain with a different example. Which of these two English language sentences do you prefer? The argument was replete with fallacies or the argument was full of mistakes. Which of these two sentences basically would you rather come across when you're reading a book? Now, whichever of these two sentences you prefer basically comes down to one thing. Do you know what the word replete means and the word fallacy? If you happen to have a very wide and rich vocabulary in the English language and you know what all of these words mean, then you'll probably prefer the sentence on the top you'll probably find this sentence a bit more poetic and a bit more expressive, whereas the one underneath is just basic and dull. But if you have no idea what this word replete means, and if that's you, then don't worry, you're not alone. I also didn't know what this word meant until I literally used a thesaurus to create this example. Well, if you don't know what this word means, then you'll probably hate this top sentence. You'll probably find it pompous or overcomplicated. And you're probably thinking, why can't this author just write things in simple terms that more people will understand? Well, this is basically what happens with code as well. So let's go back to that very first example. The bottom function here uses some of the more advanced or less commonly used features of JavaScript. So there's a generator function defined by this little star after the function name, and then there's a yield statement as well. Now these are things are like your complicated words in your vocabulary. If you understand generators and yield, then it's likely that you'll find the bottom function nicer and more expressive and maybe even easier to read. But if you haven't learned generators and then you'll really struggle to get this, you'll say it's less readable than the top one. So remember, it doesn't make you a bad programmer if you don't know all these more advanced language features. You don't really need to know about iterators and generators to be a productive software engineer. But more advanced and more senior engineers are more likely to be fine with this bottom example. And then they would even say that it's easier to read. So ultimately, when you're considering readability of your code, you really need to consider the programming vocabulary of the people that might be reading your code. So if you work on a team of super, super senior JavaScript engineers, and you've all had years and years to study JavaScript and to try out all the features, then sure, write your code using any language feature you like, so long as the browser supports it, or you transpile it to something the browser supports. However, if you have more junior members of your team, then it might be worth helping them out a bit and just using a common, more widely used syntax. There's nothing wrong with agreeing a coding standard on your team that you won't use language features that aren't widely understood. If that's the most effective way for you to work together, then go for it. Ultimately, context matters a lot, and the vocabulary of the people who you are asking to review your code also matters a lot as well. One last thing I will add though is that personally, I feel like if a language supports a feature and it can lead to more concise or expressive code, then occasionally it might be worth the effort to use it and spend that extra time teaching the less experienced members of your team about that feature. After all, if every book you read only contains the most basic English words, then how are you ever going to learn and get better at the language? Reading the word replete might be jarring or annoying the first time, but if you take the time to pause and go and look that up in a dictionary and learn about it, then you will actually learn and improve your vocabulary. And this is what a lot of people do just through reading books. So the same goes for code. If you want to introduce more advanced language features into your code base as a learning experience for all of your teammates, then as long as you don't come across as arrogant or pompous or seem like a know-it-all, if you can approach that sensitively, then maybe it's an opportunity for everybody to learn about these core cool features. So just try to be a team player with everything that you do. Anyway, I'd love to know which of these you prefer ultimately, so let me know in the comments section below. If you've got any of your own examples you've come across, then add them into the comments too. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. I'm here every week with coding tips and tutorials like this one right here on your screen now. So until next time, my name is James Charlesworth and this is Train to Code on YouTube.